Uh, I think that the church has lost this element of honor. I feel like that we, we've learned to go through the motions, but where is the true honor? I feel like that a lot of times we can honor with our lips, but our heart can be far from the Lord. And I feel like there's this key significant thing of honor that God is wanting to get us back to. I think that there's this thing that God wants us to, uh, to understand what true kingdom honor is and the importance of honor in our life. And I feel that the Lord is leading us in this direction of honoring Him, honoring His Word, honoring His presence, honoring our spouses, honoring uh, you know, our finances, honoring the Lord with our finances, many different areas and aspects of honor, because I think there are things that we never, levels that we never reach because of dishonor in our life. I feel that there is, uh, there, there is an element of dishonor and disrespect that it may not be the writing on the wall, but in our hearts, we are not taking honor to a new dimension and a new level. And I'm not a, I don't even mean just a new dimension or a new level. I'm meaning just the kingdom honor that we see in the Bible of how the kingdom operates through this principle of honor. It's a, it's a principle of honor that has been lost in our churches. It's been lost in our society. When I talk to young people today, I cannot believe the disrespect and the dishonor that comes out of their mouth. And honor begins in the heart of man in the household of individuals. And I believe that the reason we've lost honor even in the church and honoring and worshiping the Lord, that many times people can sit through a service with a religious duty and not honor the Lord in the place of worship not honor the Lord during the altar time, not honor the Lord, not that we're doing anything on the outside that looks disrespectful, but honor is something that we actively involve in that our life honors the Lord. And in that honor, it is a, it is a code, I feel like, that unlocks things. I remember when I was in elementary, not, not elementary school, but I was in middle school, I remember I got my locker in the gym room, and we had a combination lock in the gym room that we could put on when we put our clothes, when we changed out in the gym room, and I, I love the combination locks because I got to spin the little dial and put the certain numbers on there, and whenever you had the right code for the lock, you unlocked it so that you could access what's on the inside of the locker. And I believe that there are things in the, in the realm of the presence of God, in the things of the Spirit, that a lot of times we don't talk about in church anymore. We talk about our five steps to prosper and three ways to have a better marriage, and all that's great and good, and it can be founded upon biblical principles. But I'm here to tell you, we can do everything that we want to do to try to make things better without the presence of God on our marriages, on our life, on our finances, on our ministries, on our bodies, on our our life, we are spinning our wheels. What we need is more of His presence and glory. And it's not that we're waiting on God to pour out more. And we pray that and we sing that, Lord, give us more, give us more. And the Lord is wanting to give us more. But there is a code of honor that will unlock new realms of God's presence and God's glory in your life. It's honoring the Lord above anything and all things. It's honoring Him not with just our lips. It's honoring Him with our actions. It's honoring Him in every area of our life. It's making a conscious decision that when I get up every day, I'm not just going to walk through the motions of checking off my Bible reading. I'm going to honor the Lord with how I read my Bible. I'm going to honor the Lord with how I interact with other people. I'm going to honor the Lord in my business affairs. I'm going to honor the Lord with my Bible. Body. I'm going to honor the Lord with what I do in life because when, when you begin to walk in this code, in this principle of honor, it will begin to unlock things in your life that, 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 that you could never unlock on your own. And what happens is many Christians spin their wheels and they pray prayers over and over and over again and they never see results. Why? Because many times there is a, a lack of honor. There is a thing of disrespect that happens in our life and there are, there are rewards that are to be had for you and I as the Christian that God wants to reward us with His blessings, with His presence, but the only way to get there is through honor. Honoring Him with our very being, with our very life. And the book of 2 John, chapter number 1, there's a, ver a verse in here in verse 8 that talks about looking to yourselves, that we do not lose those things that which we work for, but that we may receive a full reward. 
And in this, in this, uh, in, in this epistle here, in 2 John, he is talking about walking in Christ's commandments, walking in the principles of God, walking in the Word of God. He goes on to say here that you've got to beware of antichrist, deceivers that try to get you out of the will and the doctrine of the kingdom and the way of the Lord. He's saying that, you know what, you've got to beware of false teachers. You've got to be aware of these distractions and these things and these, uh, these culture uh, things of the earth that try to even creep into to the body of Christ try to creep into the church that we begin to get so uh, in tune with the culture that we forget the culture of the kingdom. That where we begin to cause our culture to look like the culture of the world to try to attract people or to try to not walk in the full holiness that God has called us to walk in, where we are able to compromise certain things in our life, even in the church, because it's okay with the world and it's not that bad, and at least I don't do this, and at least I don't do that. But when we do those things that are contrary to the Word of God, we dishonor His Word, and when we dishonor His Word, we do not walk in the full reward that God wants us to have. Why? Because with obedience comes the blessing of the Lord. And the culture of this world, the culture of this life, then, and I believe that in this hour that we're in, even coming through shutdowns with corona and all this kind of thing, God, is, God is, has shaken some things and He's raising up a church that's not about the things of the world anymore, that we are lovers of His presence and God is looking for people that will pursue Him and honor Him no matter the cost, no matter the price, that we realize that we only have life because of the goodness and the grace of God. And he says in John here, uh, in the epistle of John, he said, beware of these deceivers and these, these things that, that come in. He said, you got to look to yourself because a lot of times honor is a hard thing for us because people seem so dishonorable. Come on, how many know what I'm talking about? We look at everybody else and we say, well, I ain't going to honor him and I ain't going to honor this and I'm not going to honor that and I'm not going to on and on and on. And, and, and we look at what everybody else is doing and we use it as an excuse not to honor the word of the Lord. Sometimes we see our enemies, and the Bible says that we are to pray for our enemies. We're to bless those who, 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 who do wrong things to us. But sometimes it's hard to walk in that level of honoring the Word and doing what the Word says. It doesn't mean that you're buddies with that person. It doesn't mean you don't speak truth to that person. But what it means is your heart is so pure that you're going to honor the Word of the Lord, and you're going to pray and bless your enemies out of a pure heart. And that is honoring the Word of the Lord, and it unlocks things. It unlocks things in your life. It unlocks things in their life. And what it does, it causes the destruction of the enemy and the plan and the purpose of the enemy to begin to diminish and the plan of God to begin to spring forth in your life. Honor code unlocking things. There are things that seem locked up in our life, but they're really not locked up. They're not locked up. They're freely there for us when we walk in the principle of God's word of honor. He says here, you are to look to yourselves. We are not to blame it on anyone else. We're not to say, well, I can't do this or I can't do this because of so-and-so. I can't do this or I can't do this because of, the, uh, because of the, the news media. I can't do this or do that because of my lack of finances. I can't do this or do that. No, when God tells us to do something according to His Word, when we honor His Word in our life, it unlocks supernatural blessings. It unlocks the abundance of God. And he said, therefore, look to yourselves that you do not lose the things which you work for. Look to yourself because the very things that you work for can be lost. The very ground that you have taken can be lost, not because of the enemy, but because of our actions and attitudes. Because we decide that we're going to be disrespectful and dishonoring because we feel like that we have a right to. And let me tell you something. In the world, you have a right to. But in the kingdom... In the kingdom of God to function and operate in all that God has for us in the full reward, you ain't got a right to lose it. You ain't got a right. You don't have a right to give anybody a piece of your mind. You don't have a right to, to put your foot somewhere. You know what I'm talking about? I'm about to, I'm about to all, all these things. It's the flesh that we talk, talked about last week. And he says, he says, look to yourselves that you do not lose the things which you work for, but that you may receive a full reward. 
There's something that is so important in the life of the church today that seems missing, and it's this element of honor. I believe that with all of my heart. I can't speak for everybody, but I believe that as a whole in our society, we see it. And there's a code of honor. Honor unlocks the kingdom blessings. It unlocks the kingdom uh, rewards. It unlocks the kingdom benefits that we are to walk in. Dishonor hinders. Dishonor hinders the benefits and the blessings of God in our life. Dishonor will honor. Uh, dishonor will hinder those those benefits and blessings that God has given us. I remember times in my life where I felt overwhelmed and overcome by the enemy. I remember as being a young pastor, I was a youth pastor, and I felt an attack on my body one day. I went to the office that I was working at, the church that I was working at, and I felt like something crazy was going on in, in, in my body. And, and listen, if you need to call 911, call 911. I'm not saying don't call 911. I'm saying be in such tune with the Lord that you hear his voice because sometimes 911 can't help you. You know, I, I told you this last week. I said, listen, hey, I'm not against doctors and I'm not against medication. But you know what I found out? We found out in my grandmother's life this week that she's, the last couple of years, she's, she's had a swelling in her feet and her ankles that really, really hurt bad. Can't get any relief from it. The doctor really didn't know what to do. The doctor couldn't help her. She had low levels of sodium, and her doctor just kept telling her to eat more salt, eat more salt, eat more salt. And we just found out that the medication she was on was causing all these problems. She got off the medication. She has no swelling in her ankles, no swelling in her feet. Her sodium levels have returned to normal. Why? Because thank God for medication. But listen, sometimes even when you call 911, they can't help you. And I remember as a young pastor being in my office one morning and something came over my life and, uh, and the, physical, the physical stuff that I was feeling I felt was an attack on my life. I thought, my gosh, am I having a heart attack? What's going on? And I thought, do I need to call 911? And the Spirit of the Lord quickened me and said, open your Bible to Psalms 91 and begin to declare the word of the Lord. And I stood there and I began to declare the word of the Lord and I began to speak the word of the Lord over my body. And I was, well, I was fighting through something in, in my life and, uh, you know, uh, it was an attack on my life. But you know what? I honored the word of the Lord in that moment instead of going what my feelings and flesh told me to do. I came through that. That thing lifted off of me. Not long later, I had a physical. I checked things out in my body. Things were fine. Things were okay. It let me know that, you know what, I was under an attack. And at that moment, I could have been diagnosed with something. And I could have been put on some kind of medication, which there's not anything wrong with that. I'm not saying there is. But I'm saying in that moment, no matter what in our life, we have to honor the word of the Lord in the place of prayer, in the place of not wavering at his promises. Why? Because God sees you knows you, he has a promise for you, and there's an enemy that does not like you. And when we honor the word of the Lord, it unlocks supernatural blessing in our life. It unlocks the flow of God. It unlocks the goodness of God. Honor is an essential key. It is an essential key to receiving from God. Sometimes we don't receive from God because there's a lack of honor in our life. There's a lack of honor in our life. It's an essential key from, for, for receiving from God. I'm reminded in Matthew chapter 13, 57 and 58, when Jesus went into his own hometown. Many of you know this story. I'm just going to read a couple of verses. So they were, they were offended at him, but Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country. He's not without honor except in his own country. They were offended at Jesus. They, did, they were not honoring him, and he and he did not do many mighty works there because of what? Their unbelief. Unbelief led to a place of dishonor. I want you to catch that for a minute. Unbelief led to a place of dishonor. When you don't believe the word of the Lord, you dishonor the Lord because you don't believe his word. When we put our feelings above the word of the Lord, when we hear sermons about worship but we can't worship and we don't believe that's possible, we dishonor the Lord and therefore we never get the breakthrough in our life. When we hear words like we are to give thanks always, come into his presence with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, and we don't believe if we thank him and if we praise him, that we're really going to get anything, that is unbelief that causes us not to walk in obedience to the word of the Lord. And when we do that, that is dishonoring and disrespecting the word of God. 
Am I in the right place? Jesus said, I couldn't do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. It led to this place of no honor. Honor is this. It's a high esteem. It's great respect. Honor creates life-giving and life-promoting relationships. It creates life-giving and life-promoting relationships. We can disagree but still have honor in a relationship. That's what I see in the church today. Thank God we're standing up for the truth and we need to be bold. But listen, we're not to be, we're not to operate like the wicked one and spew strife and envy and all this kind of stuff. We're not to be hateful Christians because we don't believe in something or someone is doing. Yes, we need to stand up for the truth. But the last time I read my Bible, one of the fruits of the Spirit is kindness. And when we are not kind at delivering the truth, you can still be bold. You can still, uh, you can still be in that place of the anointing of the Lord that may, not, that, that may not seem like it's very friendly, but there is a kindness from the fruit of the Spirit that you are not just saying things that bring disrespect and dishonor. And so many Christians today are operating in this thing of being so disrespectful. Whether you agree with the president or not, there are some things that make me cringe when I see them on Facebook. Why? Because that is a position that is in our land, and that person is there. Whether you agree or disagree with them, you can stand up for the truth. But to bash someone and call them certain names is dishonor and disrespect. And some people will say, well, he's not honorable. Well, you're not honoring the man. You're honoring the position that they are in because it's a principle from the Word of God and then we wonder why things are happening in our life or not happening in our life and it's because we've got to get back to the pureness of operating in the Word of the Lord and operating in the principles of the Word of God. That's not popular. That's, that's not popular because we, we, we have every... We have, We have so much division in the earth. We have so much division in the earth. And what we're to do is not promote division. We're to promote truth. We're to promote it under the influence and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We're to stand up for what is right and not agree with principles that are contrary to the Word of God. That is so disgraceful and dishonoring. And it's easy sometimes to call them a bad name. Because that's how we feel. You know what I'm talking about. It's easy to say, you know what? I'm going to cut you down a notch with my words. It's easy to do that. But it is the right thing to do. Is it really the right thing to do in our life? Honor is this high esteem. It creates life-giving and life-promoting relationships. Honor is what causes you to access the kingdom benefits. Causes you to be promoted in the things of the kingdom, the fruit of an honor honor culture. When you create an honor culture in your home, in your life, in your family, with your children, when you create an honor culture, it creates and causes God to flow in our life, in our home, in our communities. See, we're trying to teach our children right now, just because you disagree with a teacher or an authority, it doesn't give you a right to dishonor and disrespect them. Even if they are out of line, you stand your ground for truth, but you don't get off in error by being disrespectful and dishonoring. It's amazing how we can be so disrespectful even in our homes. It's amazing how we can be so even disrespectful to our spouses sometimes. We all got the flesh now. Don't get me wrong. We all mess up and make mistakes, and we have to repent of those things. But I'm talking about creating this culture that we see in the Bible, this culture of honor. Honor, when I looked up the word honor, it depends on which translation you look at. I've, I've found that the word honor is mentioned 147 times, depending on the translation that you, that you look at. And honor is so important all throughout the Bible. Honor is so important, yet we live in a deep culture of disrespect and dishonor. We see it all the time with social media. People don't honor the word, take the word out of the schools, take the take the commandments off the courthouse. We see an entire society that's beginning to corrode at levels we've never seen before. Why? Because we dishonor the Lord. It used to be a thing back in the day that if you were a pastor, people would respect that. Now if somebody finds out you're a pastor, they'll cuss and just to make you mad. 
It's like, please don't introduce me as a pastor right now. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not ashamed that I'm a pastor, but they're going to go ahead and put up a wall if they know I'm a pastor. Because before I'm a pastor, I'm just the son of God. Before I'm a, before I'm a pastor, I'm just a, I'm just a human being. But what happens in our society today, the church used to be respected, and pastors used to be respected. And to some degree, they still are. But now I'm seeing this entire shift that if somebody knows you're a pastor, they automatically begin to put up a wall. They automatically... Will, 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 will do things just to try to provoke you and say things to just see what comes out of you. We see this decline in our society today, this deep culture of disrespect and dishonor. We see it in children. We see it in schools. We see athletes doing it to their coaches. We see it everywhere. We see it in political parties. We see people doing things that are just disrespectful and dishonoring. But honor will always bring rewards in our life. We operate in the the kingdom principle and the kingdom culture of honor. God wants to reward us. There's a few scriptures, Hebrews 11, 6. We all know this. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is what? He is a rewarder of those who will diligently seek him. God is a rewarder. Psalms 19, 9 through 11. The fear of the Lord is clean. The fear of the Lord is clean. The fear of the Lord is clean, it's enduring. That's what the scripture says. The fear of the Lord is not that you're afraid God's going to strike you down and kill you. The fear of the Lord is a reverence to the Lord. It is an honor and a respect that, you know what, when I walk in a room, when I walk in the house of the Lord, I'm going to honor and respect the Lord. When we are worshiping, I'm going to honor Him with my worship. I'm going to honor Him with, with all that I, that I have, with all that I am. The fear of the Lord, the honor, the reverential fear of the Lord, it is clean, the Bible says, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether, more to be desired than any gold, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Mm. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. See, we honor God and His Word by living it out. By living out what He has instructed us, by living out His promises, by walking in obedience to His promises. There is a great reward. What did He say in 2 John? Look to yourselves. Look to yourselves. I want to read it again. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things which we work for. You ever have those people that just want to provoke you? Just, just want to provoke you to wrath. Like in one minute, you can lose everything that you just work for. But in that moment, you feel like, I don't give a rip. It's going to be worth it. You know what I'm talking about? I don't care. I mean, I've had moments of the flesh, especially with family. You know what I mean? i got a younger brother. i got a younger brother, and I have moments of the flesh. And man, in the flesh, I'm just like, rah, rah, rah. She sees my flesh more than anything else. And she says, if you, if you do that, and if you say that, You could lose your whole ministry. (laughs) That's how bad I'm in the flesh. I'm like, I don't care. (laughs) I'm like. And then she starts calming me down. All right, let's pray. I don't want to pray. I want to kick somebody's butt, (laughs) you know. People just poking you, poking you, poking you, poking you, poking you. Things just poking you. Things just getting on your nerves. You know what I mean? Where I'm about to... I'm about to to tell the whole world who you are on Facebook. (laughs) I'll show them a thing or two. (laughs) You know what I mean? Just in that moment. Do you know when you do that, you look silly? I mean... I'll give them a piece of my... Sometimes I read things that people post about people and stuff on Facebook, and I'm saying, if you knew how silly you look right now, you would delete that thing. You would take that thing off. But in that moment, we get caught up in that thing of just dishonor and disrespect. It doesn't mean that you can't voice your opinion about a certain thing. It doesn't mean that you just got to lay down and not say anything. But what you do and what you say has to be out of respect to the Word of God, if nothing else. He said, look to yourselves that you don't lose what you've already worked for. 
but you continue on so that you can receive the full reward, to receive a full reward. Dishonor can cause you to lose things that you work for in a moment. Come on, how many know that happens in marriage? You can, you can be working on your marriage, working on your marriage, growing in your marriage, and you dishonor your vows with unfaithfulness, and you have just lost everything that you've built. And sometimes you've got to either rebuild it, or you've got to start your life over, or this or that. Why? Because you dishonored your vows. I know that hits home sometimes to people, but you think about it in ministry. When people dishonor the word of the Lord and they get a little flirty when they're married with someone else, what does it do? It discounts them from everything that they've worked for. Why? Because they dishonored the word of the Lord. You take ministers that, 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 that take money and that are unfaithful and all those kind of things. What does that do? It causes them to lose the ground and the momentum that they've already walked in. Why? Because they have dishonored their commitment and their covenant with the Lord. How many know that happens in jobs? In a moment when you dishonor and disrespect a boss or a manager, you can lose the very promotion that you were working for. Why? Because the devil wants you, wants you to get in a place that you lose your cool so that you can be dishonor. You can dishonor and you can disrespect. And sometimes the jerk deserved it. Come on now, am I in the right place? That's just how it is. Like, you're just being a jerk right now, and I'm just going to tell you like it is. Sometimes you want to do that. Listen, the Holy Spirit will not only give you words to speak, He will tell you when to hush your mouth. Jesus went before people, and there were times that He did not even say a word. He did not even say a word. Why? Because He was not going to do anything to dishonor His Father. He was not going to do anything, even though... Even though the enemy came to him after he had been in the desert for 40 days and fasting, and the inner enemy came to him to tempt him, what did he do? He spoke the word. He honored the word of the Lord. When he could have went off on that devil, he could have did anything that he wanted to do. When he was in the garden and he was sweating drops of blood, you know what he did? He honored the the Lord. When they ridiculed him, when they made fun of him, he, he honored his Father. That's what I want to say. He is the Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They're three in one. But, you know, he, he honored his Father. He honored the Word of God. And because of his honor, we're here today. Look to yourselves, the Scripture says. Look to yourselves. Jobs and careers, in a moment, dishonor your boss and lose it all. See, we're to operate in this honor principle, and it's not always easy. But it's attainable. You know why? Because His grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. And we've got to get our minds right. We've got to get our culture right in our minds. We've got to get a culture of honor in our heart. That is our heart to, to, to walk in honor to the Word, pleasing unto the Lord. We're to operate in this honor, honor principle in all relationships in every area of life. And that's why you pray that God brings the right people and removes the wrong people. Not every person is supposed to be a part of your life. It doesn't mean you have to be friends with people. It doesn't mean that people that are just walking in evil and evilness and everything else and, and, and all these kind of things, it doesn't mean that you're buddy-buddy with those people and you just lavish all this stuff on them. It's that you honor the Word of the Lord. Whatever He says to do, you do it. And it unlocks things in our life. I'm reminded in 1 Samuel 2, uh, 2 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, the Scripture tells us, The Lord said, Those that honor Him, He will honor them. If we honor Him, He will honor us. Proverbs 3 and 9 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions. We might talk about that later. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. 1 Peter 2 and 17 says, Honor all people. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the King. Honor. Honor. Somebody shout it with me. Honor. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding. Talking about your wives, dwell with them with understanding. That's a whole other sermon. We're going to talk about that later, maybe. Dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel. That doesn't mean... That just means you probably can bench press more than she can. A lot of people say, that woman is just weak. 
No, some of the women in here are more, more stronger in the spirit than some of us men, and we need to check ourselves and rise to the level that God has called us to. Can I just take a moment and call the men of this house to a deeper level of honoring the word of the Lord? honoring the presence of God in the place of prayer, honoring the Word of God in your life, pressing into the things that God has called you to. Can I just go ahead and declare over the men of this house that every lie is going to be broken off in the name of Jesus, that condemnation and shame and those feelings that you're not good enough and you can't pray good enough, those are all lies for the de from the devil. Can I just go ahead and prophesy over you today that there is no shadow that he's not about to light up in your life. There's no lie that he's about to tear down, that if you will hang around long enough, if you'll come to the Bible study, if you'll hang around us long enough, you know what? You're going to walk in the identity that God has for you because it's important that you do. You are important to me. You are important to this community. You are important to your family. You are important to this house. And I'm calling us that, you know what? Yes, the woman is the, the weaker vessel, but men have, have caused, called them, caused themselves to be weaker than what they're supposed to do. And so men rise up in the name of Jesus. Jesus, you can do it. Well, I don't know if I can come to Bible study. Pastor might ask me to pray. I'm going to ask you to pray because there's a prayer on the inside of you. If that makes you nervous, I'm going to come to your house and have Bible study at your house. I ain't leaving you behind. I'm going to drag you with me. I'm going to pull you with me. I'm going to keep praying for you. I'm going to keep prophesying over you. I'm going to keep calling out the destiny that's on the inside of you. You know why? Because you are important. I can't pastor this church by myself. I need strong men holding my arms up. Have you ever heard about Moses? He had to have people to hold his arms up. And I think, I'm thankful that it's not just the men. I know there's women in this house that are holding my arms up. I know there's a group of people that comes out every Tuesday night holding my arms up. I am grateful for the people that maybe can't get here. But in the place of prayer, you're holding my arms up. But you know what? I'm calling more men to come up in the destiny and the identity identity that God has for you. I'm not looking for you to sign up for a ministry. I'm not looking for you to start this ministry and do this and do that. I'm looking for you to be who you're called to be more than a conqueror. Because that's who you are. Oh, but I, I can't read the word today, man. I'm too busy. I got to make ends meet and I got to get up and go to work and I got to do this and I got to do that. Let me tell you something. If you will start honoring the word of God, he will start doing things you can't do on your own. He'll start opening up doors so you have a little bit more time at home. He'll start doing things that you've been striving to do all these years. He'll, he'll bring unexpected blessings in your life. Why? Because you're honoring the word of the Lord. You are honoring your father as a son of the living God. I was trying to read this scripture. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 7. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife. Honor your wife. Man, she's getting on my nerves. Honor her anyway. We got in a spat this weekend. I'm like, I got this word of honor, and I'm just being all dishonored and disrespectful. And I'm like, convicted. Like, I don't want to be convicted right now. And yes, I do. I always want to be convicted. Holy Ghost, I'm sorry that I said that. But you know my flesh don't want to be convicted right now. So I had to call my son, and I had to call my daughter into the kitchen. And I said, can y'all look at me? And she wasn't looking at me. I said, can you please look at me? She finally looked over at me. What you want? I didn't tell her she was wrong for her bad attitude. <laughs> I didn't give her a list of why she got me in the flesh. I didn't do that. I used to do that, but thank God I'm progressing. Y'all pray for me. I looked at my son because I was harsh with him. And I said, listen, Micah, the way I talked to your mother was wrong. And daddy shouldn't have did that. And I had a moment... And honey, I apologize. I'm sorry. That's not my heart. Will you forgive me? Yeah. <laughs> That's all I needed. Okay, I got that. And I said, Micah, I'm sorry for the way I talked to you. I know you were just trying to help. But I was just agitated. It's okay. Kids are so forgiving. My wife is really so forgiving too. 
That's why we're about 19 years into this thing. Because she's so forgiving. I'm pretty forgiving too, but... It says, honor to the wife as the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. This honor thing runs so deep. It runs so deep, and I won't have time to talk about it today. Even the children, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 through 3, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother. Honor your father and your mother. We got any teenagers in here? Honor your youth pastors. Don't come to church asking them what they got for you. Come to church asking your youth pastors, Hey, pastor, is there anything I can do for you today? Is there anything you need me to clean up? Is there anything you need me to get? Hey, do you need me to open with prayer? I believe in miracles. Oh, that's a bad song. (laughs) I am so sorry. That's a bad song, isn't it? Is that a bad song? Somebody sent me a video the other day, had a bad song in it, and I'm like, got that bad song in my head. I'm having to sing, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. And I'm like, my light isn't little. This light of mine is Jesus. He is a flaming fire. Who wrote this song, this little light of mine? Anyway, I believe in miracles, though. Hey, y'all, we we leaving for vacation right as I say amen. I'm about to just go ahead and say amen. If I don't see you, we're jumping in the truck. We're headed to the beach. Pray for us this week. My daughter's on the back row. She was all day yesterday, Daddy. Can you go short today? I said, I am am not honoring you, girl. I'm honoring the word of the Lord. (laughs) So however long it takes, it takes. So children, honor your father. (laughs) Honor your father. And your mother. Because honestly, honor begins in the home. It really begins in the home. And it's hard for us to honor in our culture because there are so many dishonorable things that are going on. It's easy for the church to get caught up in this bickering back and forth, even on Facebook. Especially with political things and uh, denominational things. And the list goes on and on. It's not just one thing, but we get caught up in this just filth coming out of our mouth and disrespect and dishonor. Listen, don't hear me wrong. we got to speak the truth and stand up. we gotta, we got to say, hey, that was wrong and this is wrong. But we got to do it in a way that honors the Lord. Because a lot of people look at the church today and they don't see the characteristics of God. They don't see the characteristics of the kingdom. They see self-righteous religion just people just trying to push their own agenda as well. And it's the love of God that leads men to repentance. And love is not siding in and being silent. It is speaking the truth, but it's speaking the truth in a way that's honorable to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Because even when Jesus encountered people, even people that were in sexual perversion, even harlots, he gave them a choice. He said, this is the way, this is the life, you choose it. Even when he, he met people at wells that, that, that were in adulterous relationships, he, he spoke the truth and talked about him being the living water and gave them a choice. I know when he came in, he well, Pastor, he turned over some tables, man. He built some whips. He was whipping people and everything else. Yes, I know that he did that. He was, he was, he was fed up with the religious demons in the community. He was fed up with that, and he turned the tables over. Why? Because his house was to be a house of prayer, but they made it a den of thieves with all their, all their stuff they were trying to do and sell. But there's this level of honor. And it's so hard, even in the church today, because we look at leaders, we look at, we look at the media, we look at bosses and managers, political leaders, and it's easy to dishonor and disrespect. And that gets, that gets off in our children, that gets off in our marriages, that gets into our culture. And we make excuses why we can't honor. But it's really not about the person, it's about the position. And we, can't, we say we can't honor because of this and that. And honor has nothing to do with anybody else. It has everything to do with us. 
Do you know what a lot of times we do in our society today? You say, well, if you respect me, then I'll respect you. Oh, if you'll honor me. Honor is not given. It's, it's, it's earned. You know, we, 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 we make people earn certain things, but there's certain positions. There's certain things of honor is not about everybody else. Honor is about honoring God's word. It has nothing to do with what the society is doing. It has nothing to do with what anybody else is doing. It's about us honoring the word of the Lord. It's about uh, uh, us honoring, praying for those who are in authority. What if we prayed for those in authority as much as we talked about those that are in authority? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if we honored the word of God and we really prayed for those in authority as much as we, not anybody in here, I'm just speaking in general. If, 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 we, if, we, if we did that, what if we honored the word of the Lord in our marriages as much as we complained about our marriages? What if we just got back to honoring the word of the Lord and, and, and honor has everything to do with us and nothing to do with anybody else? Yet there's this biblical principle of honor that if we embrace it and we create a culture which we, in our life we begin to unlock the supernatural flow and the blessings of God. So we are to never dishonor with our words, with our actions, and with our attitudes. I wish I could say that I'm perfect in this area, but I'm not. I told you I had to repent just yesterday. But we are to press on. We got to be careful what comes out of our mouth. We got to be careful with our actions. We got to be careful with our attitudes. But what we like to do, we usually like to repay evil with evil. And that ought not to be so. It's the human nature, it's the fleshly way. And I want to close with this. Somebody shout close. I want to close with this. There's a story about Hannah in the Bible, it's in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Hannah was married to a guy named Elkanah. And not only was Hannah married to Elkanah, many of us know the story of Hannah, Hannah having a baby and everything else, but what happened is just amazing right before she got her miracle baby. What happens in this story, we like to talk about how she prayed and she made a vow with God, and that's so important, and we can preach on that, but a lot of times we miss what happened before that part and before that step, and Hannah was married to El El Elkanah. We know that she couldn't, she wasn't having any uh, babies, but uh, Elkanah was also married to Penina. I think that's how you say her name, Penina, Penina, uh, married to Penina, and Penina had many babies, and in that culture, in that day, uh, it was a big thing to give your husband babies, and Hannah wasn't able to do that. And the Bible tells us in 1 Samuel, for the sake of time, I'm not going to read it. It's chapter number 1. You can go back and read it. I'm going to pull out a couple of verses. The Bible tells us that, 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 that she honored in a place that she was even insulted. She honored by not speaking out in the flesh in her mind. I don't know what was going on even in her life, but Elkanah had two wives, Hannah and Penina, in her life, and Hannah could not give give birth to children, and this was really a big deal. But the Bible says uh, uh, Peninnah, Pen Pen she would taunt Hannah. She would, she would taunt her. The Scripture actually says that she would taunt her. She would make fun of her. Like, oh, I'm the trophy wife. I gave him all the babies. I don't know if that's fun or not, but like having babies is crazy. No, it's not. It's the birth of Jesus, you know. Where am I going with this? I'm coming off the stage. I'm going to sit down and give you the microphone. I think I'm ready for vacation. <laughs> All right, let me start over. Can you rewind that tape? Just rewind it. Just cut it off. No, I'm just kidding. Giving birth is a beautiful thing. It's the creation of God. But anyway, Penina, Penina, yes. Was given all these babies, and she was taunting Hannah. And Hannah went on a fast to cry out to God. She made a vow to the Lord. She wanted a baby. She cried out to the Lord. She went on this fast. Hannah fasted, and she cried out to God. Now, I don't know about you, but if, if, if Penina was popping off the mouth like that, you know what I'm talking about? He'd be like, you know what? I'm going to get her. I'm going to put something in her food. And she's going to have to go to the bathroom or something, you know. It's really time for vacation. i got to get out of here. Where am I going with that? But anyway, in the natural, you would be like, hey. But Hannah sought the Lord. She honored the word of the Lord. Eli the priest saw Hannah crying out to God, thought she was drunk. Thought she was drunk. And Eli the priest 
came and said, what are you doing? She is in a moment of grief, crying out to the Lord, and the priest comes in and blows up what she's doing and, and, and accuses her of being drunk and losing her mind. But she was in such a place of crying out, of desperation to the Lord. And in that moment, she could have responded in a place of frustration. Y'all know when we get frustrated, when somebody's making fun of me, and somebody's doing this to me, and I'm over here crying out to the Lord, and nothing's happening. And now the priest is coming in, and the priest is telling me I'm drunk, and this and that, and everything else. In that moment, she could have blew it up and lost it all. And disrespected the whole thing. But the Bible says in 1 Samuel, verse number 15 and 16, But Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord. She even called Eli the priest. Said, No, my Lord. I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief I have spoken until now. In verse 17, it says, Then Eli answered her, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant you your petition. How many know that if she would have dishonored and disrespected the priest at that time, when many times in the world you feel like that you would have a right to do that, the blessing from the priest might have been a little bit different. But her honor of not saying anything out of context or character, not saying anything dishonor or disrespectful, opened up and unlocked a blessing in her life that she had been crying out for. It, it, it was so powerful of what happened that she could have went either way. And in that moment, when the priest could even have been getting on her nerves, she said, No, my Lord, I am of a sorrowful spirit. And after that, he said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition, which you have asked of him. And she said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. I believe with all my heart, you may have a different opinion about the scripture, but I believe in that place she did not dishonor and did not disrespect. And because of that, it began to unlock and open things in her life. And, in, in, and, and I didn't give them this scripture, but I want to close with chapter 2 because Hannah begins to give this prayer. If you go ahead and read it, you, you see that she, 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 she gets pregnant. She, she has a child. And in, in, in chapter 2, we see Hannah's prayer. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. Because you know what she knew? That Elkanah, her husband, Eli the priest, the people that were in her life, that if she honored the word of the Lord, that if she rejoiced in the Lord, that the Lord is her supply, her, her Lord is the one that makes things happen. He said, my, she said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. When you honor the word of the Lord, you can smile at your enemies. No one is holy like the Lord, for there is none beside you, nor is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so, uh, talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth. Let no arrogance. How many of you know a lot of times when you dishonor and disrespect, it's an arrogance in you? Sometimes it's not always an arrogance. Sometimes it's a frustration and just a fleshly thing. But even her prayer was let no arrogance come out of your mouth. Let no arrogance. Honor begins in the heart. It begins in the home. Honoring the Lord, it unlocks and opens things. We see that even in an unfair situation, even when she was insulted, even when Jesus was insulted, he still honored his father. 